Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about Aya Neo's upcoming mini PC known as the Retro Mini AM02. Now, this is one I've been really excited about, and uh, recently they launched their Indiegogo. I'll leave a link for it in the description in case you want to check everything out. But in this video, I kind of just wanted to go over the specs. I got a good idea of what kind of performance we're going to see out of this thing. But the overall aesthetic of the mini PC itself is really awesome. It does have a built-in four inch touch screen up top, which does allow you to do a lot of stuff on the fly. And overall, I'm actually really excited about the AM02. Along with launching their Indiegogo campaign, they also released kind of a mini movie kind of trailer for the AM02 over on their YouTube channel. It's pretty awesome. I watched it a couple times, got some awesome background music, goes over some use case scenarios for this mini PC. And if you're not familiar with this new design, very retro, gives off that NES, kind of a modern NES look to it. And the fact that we've got that four inch touchscreen up top is pretty cool. And of course, when it comes to the overall specs, they are offering a few different storage and RAM variants. So you can get it bare bones all the way up if you want to. I think they do offer up to 32, maybe even 64 gigs of RAM right out of the box. But this is going to be powered by the Ryzen 7840HS, and with this, we have Zen 4 cores, 8 of them, with 16 threads, and the Radeon 780M RDNA 3 based iGPU. They've got a new cooling system here, it's a new 4 copper pipe cooling system. Pop up front I.O. panel, which I think is pretty cool, kind of cleans it up once it's down. Usually I try to use all of my I.O. around the back of these mini PCs before I start moving to the front, and I think this is cool that we can cover it right up. USB 4 and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. It's going to be utilizing a 2280 M.2 PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD and dual SODIMM RAM at 5600 megatransfers per second. They've added an open button right on the top of the shell so we can pop it up, get right to that I.O. Equipped with an indicator light crystal power button, 0.9 liters, so it's definitely a small PC and it will support wall mounting, so I'm guessing it will come with kind of a base amount in the box. And of course, one of the biggest things that this has that a lot of other mini PCs don't is the top screen. So we've got a four inch touch display, and this just kind of goes over some of the use case scenarios for it. FPS thunder display, so we can show our FPS right here, real time performance data. We can also adjust our TDP directly from the screen. Clock and weather widget. Quick adjustment of the system volume, quickly adjust the brightness of the connected monitor if it would support it. And there are monitors out there that can actually utilize something like this. We could also display a personalized screensaver. And there's actually a lot more that we could do with this. Now, it really depends on how they have it connected. But in some use case scenarios, we could actually set this up to display our music and everything like that. Maybe even set up kind of a Pandora widget on this. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to kind of be modding this out, different software, seeing what we could get running on it. I'd love to see what the community does with this. So they've run some in-house tests on the 7840HS, and they're not lying. Cinebench R23 multi-core, 15,991. Single core, 1,773. Time Spy up there at 3241. And yeah, we can definitely hit those numbers with the 7840U at the correct wattage. I'd love to see what we can take this up to just to get the most out of this PC. The USB 4 port is a 40 gig port. It'll support up to 4K, 144 hertz. And since we're working with a 40 gig port here, we can actually plug in an eGPU and see a really nice jump in performance if you're into using a Thunderbolt 3 or a Thunderbolt 4 eGPU dock. And finally, they've given us a breakdown on the I.O. So up front, we've got that full feature USB 4 port, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Round back, USB 2.0, DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.0, one gigabit Ethernet port, and one 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port and USB Type-C power delivery. So this is not gonna be using a barrel jack, but within the last few months, I've actually seen a lot of these mini PCs with these higher end APUs using USB Type-C. And personally, I haven't run into any kind of issues. As long as we've got the correct wattage on the power supply, we should be good to go. So yeah, I'm really excited about this, but you know, if you watch my channel, you know I love my mini PCs. Now I kind of wanted to talk about pricing here because I think it's very competitive with what's out there right now. Remember, we've got that 7840HS, and uh, from their Indiegogo page, the lowest tier is going to be a bare bones model, which means you will have to add your own RAM and storage. This is coming in at 441, moving down a bit, 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigabyte M.2 531. 
and uh, it just kind of goes up from there. 16 gigs and one terabyte. Moving up to 32 gigs and one terabyte. Now I'm really just going to be talking about this one right here. This will get you out the door, ready to go. You've got storage, you've got RAM. If we head over to Amazon and just take a look at what's being offered right now with that 7840HS, you can see that a lot of these are going to be coming with 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte NVMe M.2 SSD. So the price is going to be on up there. Uh, there's 150 off on this B link. Moving down a bit. 64 gigs of RAM. I tried to filter it by RAM, but unfortunately it's not looking like a lot of people are selling them with 16 gigs right now, which in my opinion is still more than enough. I mean, you can definitely play whatever you want with that. But at 531, it's actually not too bad if you take a look at everything else on the market. Here's the K18, 16 gigs, 512, $599. And you got to remember, We've got that built-in screen up top and a really good looking mini PC if you're into this retro styling. So I think they're kind of right on par with where the price should be on this thing. The big question is, is this something you're interested in? Are you going to wait for something with a little more power? The 7840HS does 1080p gaming pretty well. You do have to drop some of those settings down. Some of the stuff we do have to add FSR, but that chip is definitely a great performer. So let me know in the comments below if you like the styling. Could you live without that touchscreen on top pop up front panel? Is pricing on par with what you were hoping it would be? And uh, yeah, I mean, have you backed the project? Are you thinking about it? Are you just going to skip it all together? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave a couple links in the description. Soon as I can get my hands on this, I will be doing a ton of videos on it. We're going to run Windows on it, obviously. Then we're going to install some uh, Linux, do some SteamOS testing with this thing. And yeah, I think we could see some awesome gaming performance out of the iNeo Retro Mini AM02. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.